Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking around for this post-screening conversation with filmmaker Michal Weitz. Michal, welcome to the 34th Annual Boston Jewish Film Festival from Israel. Thank you for joining us in the middle of the night, like around two in the morning for you. Or Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Um, so we'd hoped your dad was going to be with us, um, but what happened? There was some electricity problems. Yeah, uh, he has no light uh, because of a mini storm that ha is happening right now. And he lives in a very small moshav near Jerusalem. Uh, so uh, they often have an electricity problem. So uh, unfortunately, he cannot be with us. Well, we're thrilled to have you, and we know you're going to represent your father really well, too. Um, and it's great to see you again, because we've had the joy of speaking. As soon as I saw your film, I fell in love with it, as you know. Um, so before we, I share some comments and we, we start a conversation together, I just wanted to read Michal's bio so you know who this amazing woman is. Um, Michal is an Israeli documentary director and producer who studied at the very prestigious Sam Spiegel Film and Television School as a producer um, at the Israeli documentary channel number eight, HOT Network. She oversaw many highly acclaimed films, perhaps some of you have seen, including, which I have, The Law in These Parts, Five Broken Cameras, The Flat, and many more. In 2013, Michal Weitz founded Tape Runners, an independent production company whose titles include Wall, The Decent One, No Place on Earth, and more. Uh, Blue Box is Michal Weitz's debut film as a director. Mazel tov again, Michal. It's hard to believe this is a first film. Bravo. <laughs> Thank you. There's applause <laughs> happening there. Also, I just want to congratulate you again because you've got a full-time job, which I get. You know, it's really cool to have a full-time job at this as a head producer at a major production company in Israel. Yeah, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So, Michal, I can't imagine what this journey has been like with you, and I know it continues with this movie. Um, as your really meticulous research documents and deconstructs the personal and national myth of your great-grandfather Joseph and part of the origin story of the modern state of Israel. What gives your film its extra power is how personal it is. And what gives it its extra credibility is how well you researched it. That you took time to read through 5,000 pages of your, isn't your grandfather a great-grandfather? Because I heard grandfather. Yeah, it's my great grandfather. It was too difficult to say great grandfather every time. So uh, he's he was like a grandfather, and okay. we, called, we called him grandfather. Everyone, <laughs> thank you for letting me know because we had written great grandfather, and then I wasn't sure when I was rewatching. So, what gives your film its power is how personal it is, and also the credibility is how well you researched it, and that you went through five thousand pages of your great grandfather's journals that you didn't hold back on sharing your findings. With your family reacting on camera and with us as viewers, it's really quite extraordinary and also courageous. And your film feels like essential viewing and history to me. I will tell you as a viewer that I, like many, I did a lot of learning and also unlearning from your film. That like many um, Jewish Americans, I put those quarters into the blue and white JNF boxes, thinking I was helping to forestate Israel with no idea what was really behind that campaign. Um, and what your film really raises, which is exciting and so important, and there's so much universality in this, is that you're raising important questions about personal and national history, and honestly confronting difficult history and making space for those difficult conversations. And this idea that rather than being defensive, let's lean in, let's lean in uh, and take responsibility for the sins of our past, right? And our mistakes. And you could say, we can do this in our personal lives too, right? It goes for nations and it goes for individuals. And I feel like in some ways, nothing could be more important. We can't go back in time, but we can change how we approach the present. So that's some of what I took. And I'm curious if that is resonating with you or what your intentions were with this film. Yeah, actually, you're uh, very, uh, if it was a test, so we, you got 100. That's oh, my gosh. An a plus. That's very good. <laughs> wow. That, um, that were my uh, in intention. Yeah, um, most of them, I think. Uh, uh, um, 
I think that only in, in the end of working on the film, I understood that um, what you said about taking responsibility and 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 learning how to talk about it within the uh, the family and and I, I I think that we we can talk about it in as a, 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 the Jewish people, the Israeli people. We we, we can talk about it. Uh, it was very difficult for me, and I think it's still difficult for me that um, it's it's kind of a taboo talking about 1948 in uh, Israel. Um, I don't understand why. Okay, I understand why, but I think that uh, Israel is is is. is strong enough right now um and it, it's very strong and, and it has to be mature country to talk about all these uh, uh things that happened in 1948 i don't think that it will uh, uh take from take the country from us uh and i think that we have a right to exist here uh, but it's okay to talk about what happened and it's okay to apologize uh, uh, for taking lands or for drawing out people. Uh, uh, and I, I only understood it when, when I uh, talked about it with, with my family members and I was so afraid to talk, to interview them. Uh, and... I postponed it and postponed it and postponed it. And I thought that I will, will be able to finish the film without interviewing them. Um, but that's a lie, of course, that I have to interview them. So uh, I did it. Yeah, uh, I, it took me 11 years to, to, to get to the point of interviewing my family members. Uh, I worked on the film 14 years. So just to understand, wow. it was okay. only by at the end of the way uh, uh, I uh, I sat down and and to talk with them because I was very afraid. I was afraid that they will be angry at me. That um, there will be uh, some um, family issues that uh, they they don't want uh, uh, want to talk with me anymore or stuff like that. Uh, um, but I did it. And yeah, you saw on the screen, my father was very angry. Uh, and it was even more dramatic uh, than mm -hmm. uh, what you saw on the screen. We, we, we didn't talk for uh, two months uh, after the shooting. And for us, it's a big deal. Um, yeah. So, but, but later on, after the film was finished and everybody saw the uh, complete work uh, they understood that um, I did a massive research and I'm not doing some kind of a provocative film just to say provocative thing about something. Um, and I was, I care, I care about it. And I, I, I was seeking for answers. And, and I think that's okay to be critical uh, and that's okay to ask questions. Um, we we know a lot of we know a big story uh, that happened to us, the Jewish people, uh, that makes us say all the time that we have to learn from the past. And uh, so we have to learn from the past, even if you are on the other side. Um, so in my family right now. It's very easy to talk about what happened back then and about the the dark side of the history. Um, we're talking about it freely and in an open way. And I really, really believe that we, we can do this also as a country um, here in Israel. It's not that easy. Uh, I had some um, screenings uh, that were very difficult for the audience to digest uh, the content. Um, and sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Please. No, it's um, you're answering a lot of the questions that I had, so you're very easy to interview. Um, I actually am curious about the response you've had in Israel, if you've shown the film to Palestinian audiences, and how that's varied. I could imagine you've had some embrace, some criticism. Have some communities be more open to the to to what your film is doing? This important film. Um, yeah, I, I was quite surprised. Uh, to find out that I was, uh, I, I received a big hug from the audience. Uh, and, and to continue what I said before, uh, I was quite surprised to find out that it is possible to talk with people about it because most of the audiences that I met were uh, open-minded to talk about it. They not necessarily agree with me, or uh, but they were open to to hear, and and I think, uh, as you said before, it's very difficult to argue with the facts. Exactly, exactly. Um, and and I'm not talking in the film. I'm bringing the diary, and the diary was written at the same day that things happened, and then he was there. Um, so it's his truth and, and it's very uh, difficult to argue with it. Um, and of course there were uh, difficult screenings. Uh, uh, last month I, I went uh, in the middle of, of, a, of a Q and A because the audience just yelled at me and screamed at me that, and it was very difficult. Um, and as for the Palestinian population, I I had very few uh, uh, screening for uh, Israeli Arabs. Um, I wish I had more, um, but you know what? I think that the film is not for them. I think that the film mm -hmm. is for the Israeli and Jewish people um, because what I found out during the work on the film is that they know their history pretty good. It's so interesting you're saying that. Yeah, yeah. But it's good. I don't know. Like, as you know, I worked on a film. I made a film called My So-Called Enemy. I spent eight years in this. It's a Palestinian Israeli film. And I was in the world with it for 10 years. And what my Palestinian with friends, is, friends would say is that one of the things about conflict resolution, one of the tenets is that you want to be heard you know, and for Palestinians to have their suffering acknowledged or their history acknowledged. And I think what's so amazing about your film is you're acknowledging history that you could say in part of an Israeli myth, myth has been erased. So you're unerasing history. And for that, I do think it's important. Um, I think it's important for Israelis and the world, but I also think it's important for Palestinians. It feels like it's a freeing or an opening because if you start there, then the question is, where do you go, right? If you start, let's acknowledge what has been hidden, like the the, the villages that were you know, covered in green now that were destroyed. So I do think there's some power in that, but that's me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. and and. For me, it was to tell a piece of history that I wasn't aware of. Uh, and I got so mad being in a forest in the north of the country and to see all these ruins. And and I, I was in the Israeli scouts and I loved to, to go and, and, and uh, uh, hiking in, in, in Israel. And I was so mad that nobody ever told me, mm. what is it? Um, and I, I thought it's a bit ridiculous because what, did, why did, did, did you think that nobody will ever ask what is it and nobody ever will research it and that, that, that that's ridiculous and that's annoying and that's not the way I want to raise my children. I want them to, to know the good things, the bad things, and let's talk about it. Um, yeah. And of course, I think that the only way that someday we'll, I, you know, to say peace today, it's, it's, it's a very, I, today, I, I may, may sound like a weirdo, but uh, um, uh, one day if we want to live here in peace, we will have to acknowledge 1948. This is the first thing, the first thing that we'll have to do. 
Thank you, Michal. What I want to do, thank you for sharing all this, is open up to see if there's any questions from the audience. Hi. Yep. Yeah. Um, one of the members of your family, I think it was your father, you have got him on, on screen saying, I don't want to be part of this project. But there he is, part of your project. How did that happen? Fantastic. And that's it. Did you hear that, Michal? Did everybody yeah. hear the question? Um, and actually, let me add to the your father thing and 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 add, like, what do you think he would say now, having seen the film? Would his answers have been different? Okay. Tell us about your dad. Okay. So what happened with my dad that uh, he uh, got uh, pretty angry at me? Uh, and as I said, we didn't talk for two months. Um, and I sat in the, uh, it was very dramatic. I cried a lot um, and you know, it's my father. And uh, I sat in the editing room and I watched the interview. And I thought that the things that my father is saying are so important and so true that it, it, it has to be in the film. No way that I'm not going to use it in the film. Uh, so I decided to edit the interview into the film, uh, not telling my father. Um, and uh, then uh, I called him one day and I told him that uh, I, I, I want him to see the first cut of the film uh, with the interviews. Uh, so he agreed and uh, we, we uh, set up a meeting in the editing room just uh, him and I, and um, I was so afraid. Uh, and I pressed the play button, and I thought that I'm going to 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 faint. Um, and it was quite funny because after the screening, the private screening, uh, he didn't say nothing. He just asked to go sit in the car and think. Uh, so he sat like this in the car for half an hour. And it was really weird and scary. And uh, at the end of those uh, 30 minutes, he, he went out of the car and he hugged me and he said, there is no way that there is uh, a, such an amazing film about our grandfather and I won't be part of it. So um, yeah, so uh, he, he loved the film. Again, he saw that I did, uh, uh, such a big work on it and and he saw that I came with a lot of respect to the family and a lot of respect to my great grandfather um, so he, he decided to uh, to be part of the film and I have to say that today uh, he's a big fan of the film and it, 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 I'm, I'm so, uh, uh, you know, it was great if he, he could be here with us, but uh, uh, he's joining me for screenings and he's the best. <laughs> Thank you for that amazing question because that was so important. Bruce Pastor, and then we've got a few more. Hi, Bruce. First, I want to commend you on the film. Um, it's a bit of an amateur historian. Uh, hey Bruce, can you talk a little louder or come closer? Uh, yeah. I learned a lot about uh, he loved the film. Was a great grandfather and Jay and Hatch in terms of the acquisition of land. It seems to me, current some current circles, uh, he would be lionized as one of the great founders of Israel, right up there with non virtually with their great founding fathers. And I'd like to ask you as to what, what happened that made him sort of resign and fall from uh, grace and why he was not uh, lionized at least in some circles that feel that Judea and Samaria were just part of Israel and he was obviously one of the most important people around to try to make that happen. Um, I can't transcribe all of what Bruce said. Did you understand some of, did you hear any no, of what he said? Hear. Okay, he loved the film, he loved the film. And I think the big question, I'm just gonna go to the end, Bruce. What happened that he stepped down? And cause he, he was saying, Bruce was saying he might be lionized by some, but he also stepped down and what was it? I need to tell you, there are like four more questions and we have like seven minutes. So we'll keep the, yeah. Can I'm you sorry, but I didn't understand the question about how did he step down? You know, he suddenly stepped down oh, from the JNF. Yes. Like, what was that about? Well, uh, I get that, right? Yeah. 
Um, first of all, it was the age. He was uh, 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 almost 80 years old. And uh, second of all, uh, he was uh, uh, he was really trying to solve the refugee problems and find solutions. And David Ben-Gurion, Shesharet, didn't pay any attention to him and to the refugee problem. Um, so uh, he tried and tried, he, he dedicated all the 50s to solve this problem and they they didn't, oh, I'm sorry. I think that my baby just woke up, uh, but that's okay. <laughs> um, uh, um, yeah, so we, we was quite frustrated that they didn't have any um, uh, solution. Yeah, we saw that real change in him later. We really saw that change. Um, yes, hi. I want to commend you for the movie. I think it was very powerful, extremely well researched. But I want to take away one phrase that an interviewer said. Looking back is very, very difficult. Um, and how can you do that without understanding the circumstances at that time? And if we do look back, four short years after 1948, 900,000 Jews from Arab lands were expelled, more than the Arabs from Israel, from mm -hmm. Israel itself were expelled. So how do you reconcile that? Do you think to some extent it was revenge on the part of the Arab countries to expel the Jews? I don't hear very much in Israel trying to reconcile and to explain and to accommodate uh, the right of return or the claims that Jews from Arab lands are hearing, uh, having unanswered. My own people lost their homes as well in those Arab lands. And we have had no compensation for that either. Um, Michal, did you hear any of that? I, I didn't get it all. So uh... this is, I mean, this is such a big conversation. And thank you for sharing your story and this question. I don't know if we can do how to how to do this with the depth it deserves, but this gentleman is his family was expelled from Arab lands and he was talking about at the time of 1948 when 750,000 Arabs were expelled from Israel, 900,000 Jews were expelled from Arab lands. And was there some conversation between those two ideas? Was any of what happened in 1948 revenge for that? And there's been nothing around the right of return and no compensation for his family as Jews living in Arab lands that were expelled. And he just said, it's really more of a commentary. I don't know that we can really get into the whole answer, but if you have a, a short answer on that. Um, Actually, I, 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 it's, it's a big issue and uh, and I don't have a short answer about it. Uh, I think that that that's, 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 it's a big subject to talk about, um, but uh, uh, I, I'll go to the, the bottom line. I think that, um, the um to to do something that you didn't like people that they did it to you to do it to the other it's not a solution um and and i i i don't uh, uh, connect to the 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 word revenge you know uh, uh i think that 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 israel uh should and you know uh, uh, what happened after the uh, exile of the Jews from the Arab lands that, that we are here, we have a citizenship, we have a country, um, and you cannot say it about the Palestinian, that they have no, the, the refugees, they, they have no country, they have no citizenship, and they, ha they have no ID card. <laughs> Or uh, so that's that's a that that's one big difference. Thank you, Michal. Um, Bonnie, did you have Bonnie? Yeah. Can you say it loud yeah. enough? So, as a as a fellow filmmaker, I'm really curious about all the archival footage that you found, 
and how long it took you to find all that and was it mostly from archives in Israel or elsewhere? I'm just really curious. It was amazing for the people that. Did you Thank hear you. that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, well, uh, it took a million years to find all this archive and I started to film uh, uh, with a big question mark about my great grandfather because he was, um, you know, it wasn't a famous, uh, or he wasn't famous like Ben Gurion, uh, and I was quite afraid that uh, that I won't, I won't be, I, I don't find nothing in the archives of him. Uh, so I even thought of. Um, but I, I started working with an uh, animator uh, to animate Joseph White's figure in the film. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but uh, through the work, I started to find more and more uh, video clips and stills photos. And, uh, and I uh, finished the film with a big library of Joseph White's footage. Um, and also, and the rest of the footage, uh, the footage from 1948 and the war, uh, it was uh, from the United States, from Europe. Uh, I think that there isn't a place that we didn't search. Uh, it was quite amazing. And there are uh, materials that we, we, we um, uh, digitized for the first time and they saw the day of life for the first time. What? So. You're saying you discovered for the first time? I mean, I was equally blown away, so thank you, Bonnie, by the archival footage and was hoping you would ask that or somebody would ask that. That's extraordinary. That, that really lent so much power to your film. Um, we have time for one more question, if anybody has. There were more hands, but I don't want to put anybody on the spot. Um, okay. Well, oh, okay, thank you. I also really loved who was moved by your story. And I imagine that if your Saba saw the film and mm. knew that you read his words, you'd be moved too and proud. But um, I know he also could feel hopeless. And I wondered um, if you imagine him in the present with you, if you are sort of speaking to his hopeless self ever, what hopeful self? The All the time. <laughs> Beautiful question. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I, I spoke with him uh, for 14 years of working. Uh, and I, I have a very long dialogue with Joseph White. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that's funny because he died 10 years before I was born. Um, but still, I, I feel like I know him very, very good. And, and I all the, all the time I ask him if what I'm doing is okay. And I try to to get into his mind and, and soul and to understand him. Uh, and until today, um, even if you look at the, uh, the, the recent elections here, I, I, I had a, a few mm -hmm. seconds asking, oh, father, grandfather, so what do you think? <laughs> yeah. Did he answer you? <laughs> <sighs> no, he was crying. Um, so Michal, hang with me for 90 seconds. I just want to tell everybody about the rest of our festival, and then I want to give you the proper love and thank you. Um, so, um, first, thank you all for being here for this screening of Blue Box, which I'm so excited, even myself, to see on a big screen versus a computer screen. Uh, there's a film right after this one um, at 8.45 uh, called... We might as well be dead that I saw and fell in love with at the Tribeca Film Festival this year. It's a fiction film by a German filmmaker, but she's a Jewish, Russian, Ukrainian emigre to Berlin. It was her thesis film uh, at around age 30. It's a it's 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 absolutely wonderful fiction 
fascinating film that I highly recommend. So that's at 8.45. We have two more nights at our in-person film festival. Tomorrow night in this very theater at 6.30, we have a short film program called Legacy and Identity. We're showing seven wonderful short films of different um, genres, including animation, fiction, nonfiction. We have nine filmmakers in person with us. Michal, I wish you were here too. We know we tried that. Yeah, um, and that's tomorrow at 6.30. And then our closing night film, um, which is gonna be at the Coolidge Corner Cinema Theater, um, seven o'clock on Wednesday night. It's called The Art of Silence. It's a feature documentary about the life and legacy of the celebrated mime, Marcel Marceau. His grandson, Louis Chevalier, is here. Um, he's in the film. He's gonna be leading us in some movement after the film. The filmmakers coming in from Zoom in Switzerland, but we have Louis here and it's like such a joy. So I hope you can join us for that. Last thing, our virtual fest goes from Thursday to Sunday and there are brochures outside. BostonJFilm.org will tell you more. So thank you all for being here. Michal Weitz, thank you for being with us in the early hours with your children for this remarkable film. Um, people can be in touch with you, right? Do you have a website or is it through Cinefield? Tell us. Uh, you can pass my email uh, to everyone that needed uh, no, no problem. Sounds wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, see you soon. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs>